What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today I have a very special guest. Uh, he's gonna tell us all about the field of plastic surgery, what made him interested in that field, and some tips for you guys. I'd like to welcome Dr. Uh, Griffin uh, here on the uh, show today. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Man. Thanks for having me, thanks for having me. Um, Dr. Gloria Griffin. Um, I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I, I'm currently at um, St. Mary Mer Mercy Hospital in Livonia, Michigan. Um, I've been in practice, it'll be three years in, in July. Wow. Uh, I, I mainly focus on post-bariatric body contouring. I'm part of a comprehensive weight loss center, uh, Michigan Bariatric Institute, where I do most of the post-bariatric body contouring, people that have excess skin mm -hmm. that, um, you know, need to be taken care of they're getting rashes and that's the vast majority of my practice um from an education standpoint I, I went undergrad at famu florida a and i'm a rattler uh hbcu trained well i went to med school at uh, wayne state here in detroit okay. uh, i love detroit so much that i wound up staying here from my, throughout my entire residency so i did both the general surgery uh, five years of general surgery and then three years of plastic surgery training. Okay. And here I am. Awesome, man. Uh, to become a plastic surgeon, I know that there's two, maybe two routes that you can take, maybe a couple of others, but uh, mm -hmm. you have to do four years of med school and then five five years of general surgery and then three years of plastics. Is that correct? And is that kind of? Yeah, that's the route, that's the route I took. Um, so there's independent model and then there's also the uh, integrated model. So independent model is the five plus three, and it doesn't have to be general surgery. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of times it's uh, ENT as oh, the wow. other specialty. See, most of the time it's general surgery, but you okay. can also have ENT um, training. Five years of that. After that, it's uh, it's uh, now three years of uh, fellowship training. After you've done that five year, uh, if, if you've done that five year. Uh, um, you're in residency. So yeah. the uh, in integrated model is where you would do three years of general surgery training mm -hmm. and then in your fourth year you would go on to your plastics training. Mm -hmm. um, in those cases you're basically like a preliminary resident for, for a three year period of time and um, but you know it saves you a couple of years, shaves off a couple of years um, in your training. Gotcha. So it, those are the more competitive uh, uh, training programs to get into Good. following med school. Yeah, what was it about plastic surgery that got you interested in it? Um, what, what, what made you choose plastic? Yeah, uh, interestingly enough, I was um, in college actually a graphic arts major initially, um, and um, you know I have a very I have an artistic background. Some people that know me know that uh, I taught myself I taught myself as the artistic surgeon, not just okay. because that's me in the operating room, but really that's. <laughs> that's what I was going to do. That's what my mom wanted me to be. Right? I gave up a scholarship um, in the graphic arts field to, to pursue a pers you know, degree in biology, mm -hmm. uh, much to the dismay of my mother. But um, that being said, you know, I kind of, as I went along through my medical school training, um, you know, I took an interest to plastics because it kind of became the best of both worlds where you have an artistic nature of the field that you can tie into medicine. So you have a perfect blend of art and science. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, here I am. And I, I think my mom's gotten over it at this point. <laughs> gotcha. that's, that's, that's trip to Vegas I sent her on. Gotcha. And I have a lot of uh, students who are uh, either in high school, middle school, uh, college and beyond. Uh, can you explain like what is a plastic and reconstructive surgeon? Uh, what does that mean? So pl the the root word plastic means to change. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people may not know that, but um, but, but plastic surgery is basically you're either uh, correcting a defect that is um, you know an anatomical deformity or an anomaly, and then just taking that and making it more normal, or you're taking something that's already normal, you know, and inherently enhancing it gotcha. uh, through plastic surgery techniques and. 
you know, that encompasses a lot of what we do in cosmetic surgery. So that's, you know, that's pretty much what it, you know, what it is. You're, you're taking something either that's um, abnormal or making it normal or enhancing something that's already normal. Gotcha. And once you complete your plastic surgery fellowship, you can venture off. I know you mentioned bariatric surgery. Um, oh, no, no, that's not really, um, that's not really a fellowship after plastic surgery. Your main fellowships after plastics can, uh, can be hand. hand you know, I know there's a lot of crossover between yeah. what ortho does in hand and what we do. Um, uh, also could be microsurgery, mm -hmm. which is, um, we are reconstructing something by disconnecting the blood supply and connecting it to another part of the body to yeah. that blood supply adjacent to it. So that encompasses, you know, I'm, we're talking about the operating microscope, you know, all of that is done under the microscope mm -hmm. and, uh, it was a very rewarding and challenging field. It wasn't for me, but you know. Then uh, there's also um, craniofacial. That's another big one. A lot of people do craniofacial afterwards. You're working with cleft palates and your, um, you know, craniofacial abnormalities that you know a lot of pediatric patients will will present with. Okay. And what type of surgeries do you normally do perform? I feel like on a daily basis. What does that usually consist of? Um, mainly, like I said, I'm, so I do a lot of, of uh, post-bariatric body contouring, so that would mainly encompass um, tummy tucks. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow I became this arm guy. I never did arms in my in my training, Yeah, but uh, I've become the arm guy somehow, so I do a lot of the, the quote-unquote bat wings that uh, your weight loss patients will have, you know, in those cases, you know, a lot of cases... Um, it doesn't matter how much you work out, you know, you're yeah. not going to get that skin to retract. So that's where I come in and yeah, uh, do that contour. If you're not like a glorified tailor. Gotcha. And I know a lot of people, when they think about plastic surgery, they may think about like breast implants, kind of the Hollywood um, uh, butt implants. Do you do any of those kind of cosmetic procedures? Um, well, I do. I do a fair amount of breast, um, breast augmentation. Okay. And with the weight loss patients, a uh, big request is not only just augmentation, but mastopexy at the same time, gotcha. um, where you not only have to increase the volume by putting in an implant, but you also have to decrease the skin envelope by doing a mastopexy or, you know, kind of like a breast lift, tailoring that skin around the implant to get that lift as well. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's, this is a pretty challenging thing, getting it right. But uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's very rewarding. Um, as far as, you know, some of the other stuff, I don't do any butt implants. Those uh, have an astronomical complication rate. Um, and it's really, those are supposed to be reserved for women that can't gain weight for a fat transfer. So fat transfer is what I would do. And that's, okay. that's essentially um, what they call the Brazilian butt lift, where you're performing liposuction, you're collecting that fat, processing it, kind of purifying it and re-injecting it where, where you want to get more volume. Gotcha. Um, what is a typical day for you? It kind of starts at what time and kind of ends at what time? You're in the clinic versus OR. How does your day usually go for you? So, um, so you know, I, <laughs> the plastic surgery lifestyle can be uh, pretty cush at times, but, you know, it's, it's by design. But, you know, I, I come in... Um, I had two clinic days, and, I'm, and they start about 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll come in early, about 7, to kind of review things, uh, kind of go through the patient's history and make sure everything's intact uh, on that end. So um, so on those days, you know, I, I may – I may usually I stay till about 5. It doesn't – usually doesn't go too far, too far out past 5, 5.30. Um, again, that's by design. But – um, on an operative day, I can op my standard operative operating days are, are Fridays, but you know um, I can operate on any day. Mondays, I typically do smaller cases at the outpatient surgical center, the hand stuff, lumps and bumps, things of that nature. And then my bigger cases, I do on uh, Thursdays and Fridays. So I'll come in at pretty much um, 6 a.m. Get the patients um, lined up in the preoperative area, get them marked. Um, which is probably the most important part of the case, marking yeah, patients. So, yeah. Yeah. And you are a private practice? No, I'm actually um, I'm actually a hospital employee. Hospital employee, okay. Um, so, yeah, and there's there's so many different models of what you can do after, you know, after you finish your your, your, your fellowship training. 
Um, I was hired by the hospital basically um, as an employee, uh, so I get a salary. Mm -hmm. I um, and it, it has many advantages, um, and, and there's some disadvantages as well. But uh, for the most part, you know, I have that internal referral system um, gotcha. where I get, you know, I have I work with two bariatric surgeons who are phenomenal, and um, you know, when they have patients that lose weight once they're ready, once they're stabilized, that's where I come in. Well, Okay, awesome. Uh, take care of them. And after you go through all those years of training, four years of med school, five years of residency, then your fellowship, I know it varies by the location and also uh, practice model, but how much can a plastic surgeon you generally make uh, outside of your training? Oh, well, that's, yeah. I mean, that, that all depends on practice model and geography and just how much you really want to work. Honestly, um, you know, just if you look up, the, if you Google plastic surgeon's salary, it falls somewhere in the realm of about three hundred and twenty mm -hmm. to $340,000. And that's probably, that's probably about accurate. If you can make less than that, and, you know, a lot of times when if you decide to go into academia, mm -hmm. you know, you're going you're gonna to make a little bit less. But mm -hmm. uh, obviously, if you go into private practice, there is no glass ceiling. We gotcha. There are... Uh, there's no uh, shortage of millionaire plastic surgeons who run in the private practice. So um, uh, it all depends on what you want to do, how much you want to work. And um, they essentially, you know, do good work. Patients will come to you. Gotcha. Um, what advice would you give to people who are interested in maybe in the field of medicine or even plastic surgery? What kind of advice would you uh, give them? I would say um, be steadfast, be patient, um, you know, Delay your instant gratification. I mean, delay you know gratification yeah. as long as you can, because it's a long road. And um, just like the most of us in uh, <laughs> that have gone through medical school, you're going to accumulate some debt, and um, and it, that's going to be stacking up the, with the interest when you're going through you know six to eight years of training after yeah. after medical school. So um, uh, you know, it's, if you want to do it. Just um, you know, connect yourself with somebody that's that's doing it already. You know, it's either said than done, but yeah. you know, find a mentor. Um, you know, I, I you know, I, I I take I take it upon myself to mentor you know students all the time to kind of encourage them. People that you know they've never seen anybody that looks like me yeah. become a plastic surgeon. And, um, and so I would say, you know, if you want to do it. Now's the time, you know, before it was, it was so competitive that, you know, you had just the, t the top 5% that were, mm. that were going into plastic surgery. I think with the three year thing was kind of deterred a lot of the, those type people that wanted the prestige of it. And then it allowed people that really wanted to do it, gotcha. the opportunity to, to, to get into it. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say plastics is one of the most competitive kind of, uh, specialties to get into. It is. So. Yeah. Even to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, man. Uh, I always ask my guests uh, three last questions. You can give like one or two word answers. Uh, okay. What is your favorite uh, food? <laughs> oh, my favorite food? I don't know, man. I have, I have such a voracious appetite. I, I devour anything you put in front of me. I don't know. Uh, favorite food? Uh, fried chicken. Fried chicken. All right, cool. Uh, what is your favorite Popeyes, thing? Popeyes, specifically. <laughs> Got you. I love Popeyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Popeyes in Jamaica, in Jamaica is probably some of the best yeah, Popeyes. Jerk chicken, that's right. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite thing, I think we briefly talked about this, to do outside of medicine? Oh, me, yeah. So, you know, for me, um, like I said, I have that art, art background. So, yeah. um, you know, I do a fair amount of drawing. I, um, I do it for therapeutic purposes for right. the most part. Um, not necessarily because I need to do it, you know, or, you know, selling my work or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, I have some... Yeah, show us some of your, your drawings, man. Yeah, I mean, I recognize him. This is a, this is a this is a portrait I did of Method right. Man. Awesome, I like that. That's um, you know, I, I started this kind of like hip hop, yeah, pioneers um, series because of the because of the lack of talent that that yeah. rappers have nowadays. Yeah. Well, it's that's DMX if you can't tell. Gotcha. Yeah, it's tight, man. Of course. Uh, what big, type uh, of uh, drawings are those? What do you use to uh, to draw? Um, I use graphite, pretty much graphite pencil. Um, I've also used pastels. Um, I'm getting into um, using art markers. Yeah. So they kind of give you a painting, 
type of appearance to him. And yeah. Also, man, we want to see some more, man. You, you, have, you have any more in that book you want to show us? Yeah. Uh, who else do we have here? Um, and do you send these to the, uh, like, if you, do you tag, like, DMX or one of those guys? Um, yeah, I tag them. I mean, just, I don't think they check their DMs very often, but uh, <laughs> yeah. this whole Black History Month, um, yeah. yeah, there's the late great prodigy. Nice. Mob Deep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who did I do lately? Oh, you're going to want to see this when I finish this. Uh, Biggie and Pac when they were okay. kids. What? That's tight. Yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, just some, you know, awesome. some, it's a way of expressing my creativity, you know. Okay, cool, man. Um, yeah, Dr. Griffin, I appreciate you, man, coming on today to speak with us. You, you're definitely an inspiration to a, a lot of us because um, I always tell people I didn't, I've never seen like a black doctor when I was growing up. So, especially someone in just a prestigious kind of uh, field, plastic surgery, someone black, you know, that looks like me and talks like me. I think that's, man, that's, that's phenomenal. I appreciate I salute you, man, for that, man. Yeah, I salute you yeah, right back. You're doing a you're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, I picked your book up, you know, and um, you yeah, know, keep inspiring. Awesome, man. Yeah. Um, and if anybody wanted to see you in your practice out in uh, Michigan, how, how can they uh, get, get in touch with you? Um, yeah, so my um, practice is located here in, in Livonia, in suburban Detroit. Um, I service the entire metro Detroit area. Um, my number is 734-655-3000. Call them to schedule an appointment. And, um, you know, whatever your needs may be, I do a fair amount of reconstructive and uh, cosmetic. So I have a very broad-based practice. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And I'll, I'll put links in the description with the phone number and his practice location. For everyone else out there, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday. Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Dr. Griffin, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again.